Hi there, Yaakov Wordy of eLerta here. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the basics of debugging a WCF web service using the Power Builder Visual Studio IDE. First important point, that is that you must be running the .NET IDE as administrator. You'll need administrative rights to be able to attach the IDE to IIS. The actual debugging itself, once the process begins, is quite similar to debugging in a client-server application. Before beginning the actual debugging process, what we're going to do is we're going to mark a breakpoint. So I'll navigate to the method that I'm interested in debugging. And over in the left margin on the line of code that I'm interested in starting the debug process on, I'll just go ahead and click and I'll put a debug marker. In order to start the debugger running, one way to do that is over in the Solution Explorer, just right click on your project and click debug. You'll be prompted to attach to the IIS running process and specifically what you're going to attach with is the or to is the process W3WP that's the World Wide Web worker process that manages a processes running in IIS. Yes, I'm going to attach to the process. Once I do that attaching, I can now go ahead and I can start up my client application. Here's my client. In this case, it's a compiled Power Builder Classic ap application that's accessing my WCF services using basic web services. I'll go ahead and now and I'll do my attach to start the client running and attaching to the server. And there it is. My breakpoint has been hit. There's my yellow marker indicating the method has been called. Now I can just go ahead and I can examine my variables. And what I'm interested in is looking at the ISTR, that structure, and so far it's empty. And then I'll just go ahead and I'll step, and there's my current instruction pointer. And I should now, at this moment, have an array of values, and sure enough, I do. And I can just keep on stepping, or I can stop my debugging process anytime I'm interested in stopping it, and the process will continue to run. And of course, my client is running as well. So that's the basics of uh, running the debugger. Again, you must be running Power Builder as an administrator, and then preferably debugging using the Solution Explorer or the, the uh, debug option on the context menu or the debug button inside the project painter. Occasionally, the modality of the main debug button uh, is not functioning correctly. Sometimes it will start the debugger process. Sometimes it won't. I'll try it right now just for the demo purposes. And sure enough, I'm attached and uh, I'm debugging. Sometimes it doesn't work. Again, the surefire way is to use the debug icon inside the Project Painter or right-click on the project in the Solution Explorer to run the debugger. That's the basics. Now I'm going to illustrate what might be a common problem that occurs when you're attempting to run the debugger and uh, show you how to uh, understand the message and solve the issue. For the purpose of this demonstration, I just st stopped and restarted my IIS server. So now I have a clean running server. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and without starting up my client application, I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to attempt to start up my debugger. And in doing so, I get this message that says the process w3wp.exe is not running. Launch the client and try again. Now, let me explain to you what w3wp is. Over here on my Windows Task Manager, over on the Processes tab, what I'm doing over here is I'm going to show processes from all users. Note here that alphabetically at this point, there is nothing named w3wp.exe. Now that's the process that the debugger has to attach itself to. Again, that's the worker process manager uh, for processes running in IIS, and it's not running. So what I need to do to work around this is actually to get my Power Builder running inside IIS. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead now and run a different client, not the one I'm interested in debugging. And I'm going to connect to the server. Now, as the login connect process starts, you'll note right there that w3wp.exe is now loaded as a process. And it's running um, by the special user that's known as the pb.net4 app pool, which happens to be the IA server application pool in which all Power Builder WCF services are run by default. Now, what I'll do is I'll navigate over to my Power Builder IDE and I'm going to begin the debug process. Again, I'll right click and I'll choose debug. And sure enough, 
I'm able to attach to the process because w3wp.exe is now loaded as a process. Uh, and it's that you're attaching to the pb.net for app pool. And again, the, the application pool into which all Power Builder WCF services are deployed by convention. This concludes this demonstration. Hey, if you have any new hires or know people who are beginning their Power Builder professional career, the great way and most effective and cost effective way to learn Power Builder is via the eLearn It Pure Power Builder Power Builder training series, the core fundamentals course, and the first part of our advanced Power Builder for Professionals course is available via isog.com. Navigate to my.isog.com slash training slash Power Builder to explore the content of these great courses that are used by Power Builder developers the world over.